Let's go ahead and have prayer. Dear Father in Heaven, thank You for this delightful Sabbath day. Thank You for what we're learning. Thank You for the challenge again this morning to praise instead of murmur, to rejoice instead of to get upset. Thank You that You're on Your throne and you are still in charge. We just pray that as we study together today, as we seek to understand the world in which we live in the light of the great controversy, we pray for the Holy Spirit to anoint our eyes with eye salve that we can see. In Jesus' name, amen. in which we live tells us that the Bible and the great controversy are not true. And when a world tells me that, I'm going to search and find any and all information that I can that says the Bible and the great controversy are true. We're going to be looking this morning at part two in this little series in Prophecy Arise, part seven, on the papacy, the CIA, drugs, and war. If you remember the last time we looked at this, we realized that during World War II, the Jesuit order and the Catholic Church that controlled Russia and Joseph Stalin pushed him to spread communism throughout the world. And that's exactly what we've lived through over the last 50 years. In fact, as I think back on my childhood, there is still one event I remember as a four-year-old child. I remember going out in my garage. My dad was out there and he had bags of canned goods. And I said, Dad, what are you doing with all these cans? He said, Son, there might be a nuclear war between the Soviet Union and America. The Soviet Union are bringing atomic warheads and they are bringing them to Cuba And John F. Kennedy in the United States are telling Khrushchev if he crosses a certain line, there will be a confrontation. Now, how many of you remember that? Nellie, do you remember that? You remember that. Jim, you remember that. Okay. I was four at that time. I still remember that experience. The Jesuits who controlled Joseph Stalin pushed him to spread communism around the world. Franklin Roosevelt, who was a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, which is a Jesuit organization, they pushed him to stop the spread of communism. As a result... Ronald Reagan in the 1980s, we all remember it, he said that the Soviet Union was the evil empire. We all remember that, don't we? 
the 1980s, the evil empire. But the United States at the very same time is known around the world, especially in Muslim countries, as the what? The great Satan. So folk, in this cold war that we lived through, the Soviet Union looked bad, the United States looked bad. And who, in the midst of this horrific conflict, who has looked better and better each and every day? Who has looked better? The papacy. The papacy. Now, folk, the creation in the United States, the agency that was created during World War II, it was originally called the OSS. It evolved into what we know today of as the CIA. Now, we know it as the Central Intelligence Agency. The truth be told, it's the Catholic Intelligence Agency. Why? Because it was Bill Donovan who began the CIA under the name of the OSS. He was a devout Catholic ordained by Pope Pius XII to create this organization to stop the spread of communism. In order to do that, and the way the CIA did that, was they gathered men in countries around the world, in Germany, in uh, Korea, in Central America, in Canada, they gathered men and they said, we will pay you, we will feed you, we will arm you, we will house you as long as you will help us to fight communism if it comes into your country. So these pockets of men, these cells of men became fighters on behalf of the Catholic Intelligence Agency. But where do you get the money to house, feed, arm all of these men all over the world? Where do you get the money to do that? Well, it didn't come from the United States. So the Catholic Intelligence Agency looked for another place in order to fund this humongous operation of stopping the spread of communism. The place that they found where they could do it, they learned it from Chiang Kai-shek in China, who was fighting against Mao Zedong and the rise of red communism in China. Chiang Kai-shek did it, from the Shan Plateau in Burma, where they were growing poppies that would then be used to produce heroin. Chiang Kai-shek got the heroin from the Shan Plateau in Burma, took that money, took that heroin, sold it to Chinese people, made millions and millions of dollars in order to fund his war against Mao Zedong. The Catholic Intelligence Agency said, well, we can do that too. So, they started getting drugs from Southeast Asia. And they sold them in the first, the inner cities in the ghettos of New York, Miami, Chicago, Detroit, Los Angeles, till finally it just was bursting at the seams to where drugs became available all over America to fund wars against communism. Now, folk, I don't believe there's a person in this room 
that has not been affected by the spread of drugs. I know I was. I was terribly affected by the proliferation of the drug culture in America. And it came from the Catholic Intelligence Agency. That's where it came from. Well, we come into the 1970s, something very significant happened in America at that time. I was an 18-year-old senior in high school, but something that had crippled America for nearly 20 years was ending, and that was a horrific war in Vietnam. It was also at that time that... Not only did Saigon fall in 1975, but the extremely fertile poppy-growing regions in Burma, the Shan Plateau, were facing a severe drought, and the papacy would need a new area to produce heroin to continue their push for an old world order. You say, wait a minute, Bill, you made a mistake there. It's not the old world order, it's the new world order. No, I didn't make a mistake. The new world order today, folk, is simply a revival of what went on through the Dark Ages. So we are seeing a revival of the old world order in which the papacy ruled the earth. It's nothing new about it. It's the old world order. Now, where would they get the drugs to finance war and the stopping of the spread of communism in the world? Where would they get the drugs? The place they found where drugs, where poppies had been grown prior to this was in the Helmand Valley of guess where? Afghanistan. Have you ever heard about Afghanistan? Has America had any involvement in Afghanistan? Have, has anything happened in America that has triggered America going into Afghanistan? To all of those questions, we could answer yes. There's an area in Afghanistan. It's called the Helmand Valley. Here's a picture of it. You can see it's hilly. But this area here, folk, you could probably throw your shoe into the ground and out would, would come up Converse or Nike shoes. It's a prolific growing region in the world. They had tried growing poppies to make heroin. It had grown there prolifically. That was the region they chose. In fact, it's called the Golden Crescent. It's right where Afghanistan, Iran, and Pakistan converge. Right here is the Helmand Valley. And drugs started flowing out of this valley area at the tune of about three million, I didn't say three dollars, and I didn't say three thousand dollars, I said three million dollars an hour. Now, folk, I'm fortunate. If I have thirty dollars in my pocket, in my wallet, okay, I feel I feel like I'm doing pretty good if I've got thirty in my wallet, okay. We're talking three million dollars an hour of heroin was being grown right here, starting in the late seventies. Late 1970s. That area, it's known as the Golden Crescent, where those three nations, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Iran, come together, had wonderfully rich soil. Poppies for heroin had grown there successfully, 
but not on the scale needed by the papacy and the Catholic intelligence agency. In the mid-70s, it was an area of vineyards, wheat, and cotton, but that was about to change, and change big time. Big time. Well, there was a problem, though. There was a problem. Now, folk, you know, we, we are hypnotized, lied to, deceived, that when some leader in some country dies and he's assassinated, we're told, well, that was because of some weirdo fanatic that, that lost his job and, and he was angry and so he killed the guy. It doesn't work that way, folk. Leaders are not killed because some, some guy that's making, you know, $5 an hour is mad and he somehow can maneuver himself so that he can kill some. It doesn't work that way. Leaders are killed because they oppose the authority of Rome. That's why they're killed. Now this man right here was leading Afghanistan in the 1970s, latter part. His name was Nur Mohammed Taraki. Now, he wanted to get rid of the production of all heroin growing in the Golden Crescent. There wasn't a lot at that time, but he wanted to get rid of it. Now, Taraki didn't realize what he was up against. But the Muslims, Taraki was kind of a liberal Muslim. There were Muslims in the area of the Golden Crescent where the heroin was grown who wanted to maintain their old beliefs. They wanted women, you know, to wear their, their uh, covering so that only their eyes would be visible. Now, we don't see that. Maybe an extremely rare occasion here in America. You go over to Egypt, folks. And you've got women walking down the street and all you can see, you can't even see their eyes. The slits are so thin. That's old Islamic religion. Um, there were Muslims in the area of the Golden Crescent who wanted to maintain old beliefs. They wanted it to be where if, if somebody went in and stole a piece of candy in a, in a store, their hand was cut off. Um, that's what the Muslims in the Golden Crescent wanted. But Taraki, he wanted to get rid of the old beliefs, the Muslims in the area, and the heroin. Taraki wasn't very popular. A group was formed by the Catholic Intelligence Agency. A group of militant Muslims were formed to fight against Taraki. Why? They needed the drugs. They needed the heroin. So they created a cell of Muslim militant men who were dedicated to creating a pure Islamic state. Does that sound familiar to you? Have you ever heard that before? Somebody wanting to establish a pure Islamic state? Have you heard that? What is ISIS? They want to establish a pure Islamic state. Well, in the 1970s, a group was formed in Afghanistan called Hezbollah-e-Islami. It was backed by the papacy and the CIA. They're the ones who funded it. They're the ones who created it. Why? Because they said these militant Muslims, yeah, their, their ideas are goofy about a pure Islamic state, but they'll fight for us so that we can have our drugs coming out of that region. The militant Muslims clashed with Taraki's government. 
During this time in 1978, the production of heroin rose to 1,200 tons. To Rocky, surprise, surprise, he was assassinated in September of 1979. And a pro-West, papal, and Catholic intelligence agency man, a man by the name of Havazula Amin, was put into power. In December of 1979, Russia invaded Afghanistan. They didn't want a Western Muslim at their back door. This was perfect. This is exactly what the Catholic Intelligence Agency wanted. They wanted Russia to invade because they wanted to create these armed Muslim men to fight against the Soviet Union and to grow prolifically the poppies for heroin. The stage was set for a clash between the Soviet Union and the Catholic Intelligence Agency-led forces that could be trained in Afghanistan. Now guess what one of the names of one of those cells of militant Muslims, guess what it was called that the Catholic Intelligence Agency created in Afghanistan to fight against the Soviets? Guess what it was called? It was called Al-Qaeda. Have you heard of Al-Qaeda? That's when it was created. Al-Qaeda is an arm of the Catholic Intelligence Agency. And an offshoot of Al-Qaeda that was later formed by the Catholic Intelligence Agency was called what Dennis just said, was called ISIS. ISIS and Al-Qaeda were creations of the Catholic Intelligence Agency. One of the major leaders of the Catholic Intelligence Agency that led the forces in Afghanistan was who? It was Osama bin Laden. The conflict with the Soviets began in early 1980. Many of the Muslim fighters were trained in the Middle East. But guess what? Many of them were trained in America and still are today. Because the need for fighters became paramount, many black Americans were recruited by the Catholic Intelligence Agency. Now you say, well Bill, why do you stress here black Americans? Well, Think about it, friends. In the ghettos of American cities, broken homes, drugs, murder, rape, you name it, not getting a fair shake, as Martin Luther King Jr. called it, that America had given the black community a blank check. Okay? So many, many black Americans are upset and disillusioned by America and American religion. So where do they turn? Well, here's an alternative. You can join up with Islam. You can become a Muslim. And then, not only become a Muslim, but we will get you out of the ghetto. We will pay you a good amount of money. We will take care of you if you will simply go fight in our war in Afghanistan. The Catholic Intelligence Agency got what it wanted. The Holy War had begun for the next decade, all through from 1980 to 1990. Heroin 
black aid amounting to more than $3 billion would be poured into Afghanistan to support the Holy Warriors, making it the most expensive covert operation in U.S. history. That's taken from Paul L. Williams' book, Operation Gladio, page 169. Now, the war to fight the Soviets in Afghanistan was called Operation Cyclone. It was created in this frame to create hundreds of of Islamic terror organizations throughout the Central Asian republics. Included in these groups would be Al-Qaeda. ISIS is an offshoot of Al-Qaeda and a host of other groups. Folk, when we are bombarded by Al-Qaeda and militant Muslims and ISIS, who is made to look bad throughout the world? Islam. They're, they're evil. But who created them? Who funds them? Who feeds them? It's the Catholic Intelligence Agency. There's the poppies growing in the Hellman Valley. Growing in the Hellman Valley that would fight war in Afghanistan and throughout the world. In order to support this holy war against the Soviets, the papacy and the Catholic intelligence agency needed huge supplies of heroin. The heroin flowing through this region in the early 80s would amount to $3 million of heroin per hour. Per hour. Revelation 18.23 says, The light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Sorceries, Greek word, pharmakia. Pharmakia, where we get our word, pharmacy. Drugs. The Bible says that the papacy, the papacy would use drugs to deceive all nations. All nations. Folk, unless we understand what has gone on first in Southeast Asia, then in the Middle East, especially Afghanistan, this part of this verse looks like absolute foolishness. But now, this all makes sense. All makes sense. America is being destroyed by the drug culture. And other nations are as well. The holy war between the papacy, the CIA, the militant Muslims versus the Soviet Union went throughout the 1980s. Through dirty money, the papacy, the CIA were arming the militants with big money, sophisticated weaponry, stinger missiles, and aiding them to drive out the Soviets. That went on, folk, for 10 years. Ten years. But where do you get manpower? Where do you get manpower to fight against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan? Where do you, where do you get men? Where, where do you get men who will go, go fight there? Well, something was happening in the United States during the 1960s and 70s and on, there were disillusioned men and this man was one of them and his name was Malcolm X. That wasn't his real name, it was Malcolm Little. But Malcolm X began to talk about being militant and converting to Islam, forsaking the 
America that had never fulfilled their dreams. From Paul Williams' book, page 257, he says, in an effort to supply recruits to the jihad, the Catholic intelligence agency once again focused its attention on America's black community. The agency realized that millions of black Americans who felt forsaken by America had converted to Islam, which they saw as the black man's religion. This movement promoted by Timothy Drew, Malcolm X, and another man that we could put in there is a man by the name of Louis Farrakhan. Same thing, folk. Same thing. Called on young black men to take up arms in the holy war to liberate their Muslim brothers. In where, Nellie? Absolutely. Absolutely, Nellie. Nellie's point for the camera is, is that a lot of recruiting to go fight in these wars for their Muslim brothers is done through the prison system. But you know, it wasn't just people like Malcolm X or Louis Farrakhan. But the Catholic Intelligence Agency turned to another sector, and in prisons, you know, Nellie, you're absolutely right, but another sector of American society, and not just in America, but we're talking internationally. It was used to get very, very famous young, successful, famous black men to convert to Islam. This man right here was probably in the last 75 years one of the top three most famous men in the sports world of America. He was born and raised, his name was Cassius Clay. But in the 1960s, he became known as Muhammad Ali. I found it absolutely amazing. I mentioned Cassius Clay. And my wife said to me, she said, his name wasn't Cassius Clay. His name was Cassius Clay. And I said, sweetheart, I, I, I know his name was Cassius Clay. She said, Cassius Clay was famous, famous in Egypt. And that's why she was convinced that's what his name was. Folk, this man was an international figure. He floated like a butterfly and he stung like a bee around the world. Around the world. Now do you think, do you think that this man, so famous, so articulate, he was brilliant. You know, most guys that go into a boxing ring, you think, you know, may maybe there's a few screws that aren't connected. But Muhammad Ali... He was sharp. He was very sharp. If you've ever listened to that guy on, on uh, broadcasts or news clips, he was extremely intelligent. Now I want to ask you, do you think that him converting to Islam, do you think that had any impact on any other young black men, especially black men, but other men in general, to also convert to Islam? Folk, there's no doubt about it. El Nelly, that's a great point. Muhammad Ali also had great influence when he refused to serve in the United States Army. Absolutely. You know, I can think of one other man in the sports world, in the 1960s and 70s and 80s, who I still remember, I, I tried to 
emulate my basketball playing just like him. But of course, I didn't have the height that he did. But he had one shot where he would get the ball and he would have what they called a sky hook. And it was unstoppable. He was known when he went to the University of California to, at Los Angeles, his name was Lou Alcindor. But Lou Alcindor converted to Islam as well. Do you know what his name became? Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Yes. Probably again in the last 75 years, if you were to say who were five of the top athletes to affect sports and culture in America, Muhammad Ali and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would be two of those five men. There's no doubt they had that much influence. Some of America's most famous world-class athletes converted to Islam and changed their names. Cassius Clay became Muhammad Ali. The basketball giant Lou Alcindor became Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Because of their influence, thousands of men worldwide look more seriously at Islam as their religion. Once converted to Islam, these young and primarily black men could be encouraged through big money and heavenly rewards to enlist in the Islamic Jihad against the Soviets. The war went on for 10 years. It was financed by the Catholic intelligence agency through drug money coming out of the Helmand Valley of Afghanistan. Now, folk, as we mentioned before, those training facilities for Al-Qaeda and ISIS, they're not just in the Central Asian republics. They are right here in the United States. The Catholic Intelligence Agency are able to produce passports to get these men into America, number one, to then train young black men primarily in the religion of Islam and then train them for combat and battle with the promises of money and for future great rewards in heaven. These places where they are trained, Maryland, Virginia, Georgia, Colorado, Oklahoma, Tennessee, California, and Washington. Folk, they are all over America. Another picture of the Helmand Valley. Afghanistan became the narco capital of the world. The Helmand Valley was a gold mine producing three to 4,000 tons of heroin a year in the 1990s. From producing mega different kinds of crops, this area made opium production the first mono crop. What a mono crop simply means is this area, after the poppies were harvested to make heroin, they would plant it again. They wouldn't change the crop each season. No, they would produce the poppies for heroin and they kept doing it. There was no change. That's a mono crop. And they did that right here in the Hellman Valley of the Golden Crescent. The annual income coming out of this region, 100 billion dollars a hundred billion dollars oh but trouble comes again the 1990s the 1990s 1995 to 2001 remember those dates friend now we're coming right up to the last 15 years in history Mullah Omar, 
is now the leader of Afghanistan. January 27 of the year 2000. Now do you see that date right there? Did anything significant happen within a two-year window around the year 2000 that affected the United States and the world that still is affecting us today? Did anything happen? What happened? The terrorist attack, the bombings in New York City at the Twin Towers. Let's see what happens, folks. In 2000, Mullah Omar, the leader of Afghanistan, decided to halt the production of opium poppies in Afghanistan. You know why he said that? He said, on the streets of Kabul, there are drug addicts. And they're dying. And they're dying because I, as the leader of Afghanistan, am producing heroin in the Helmand Valley. We are going to put a stop to it. But do you remember what happened to Mohammed Taraki in the 1970s? If you try to stop the drugs coming out of the Golden Crescent, what's going to happen to you? You're either going to be assassinated or war will be determined against you. He decided to stop growing the opium. How do you think the Vatican, the Catholic Intelligence Agency, the United States, and the Mafia drug lords, how do you think they felt about that? What's that, Nellie? They were absolutely angry. We're going to destroy this guy. Now notice what happened. Because of Mullah Omar halting opium production, the harvest for heroin fell from 4,600 tons in 1999 to 81 tons in 2001. Now you say, come on, Bill, 81 tons. That's, that's huge. Well, it is. But if you're used to producing that much, 81 looks like a drop in the bucket. A drop in the bucket. What would the Vatican the Catholic Intelligence Agency, the U.S. and the Mafia do. The mullah had to be removed in a forceful, violent manner or else. What would these groups do to create support for a U.S. invasion of Afghanistan to get their much-loved heroin back in full spring, swing? What would they do? How could they create in the American mind a desire to go fight a war in Afghanistan? What would these guys create in America so that Americans would be pushed to go to Afghanistan to fight for American freedom? What would they think of? What would they dream up to make that a reality? That's what it's called right there, folks. It was because Mullah Omar stopped the production of heroin in the Helmand Valley. It was for that reason that a horrific event was planned by the Vatican, the Catholic Intelligence Agency, the United States government officials, and the Mafia in order to push America to go fight a war in Afghanistan. Simply to bring back the production of heroin in Afghanistan. The Catholic Church, the Catholic Intelligence Agency, the drug lords of the world, the Mafia wanted a reason 
for America's military to invade Afghanistan in order to secure poppy production. 9-11 was the answer. Regardless of how many lives were lost, regardless of how many people's lives were destroyed, this had to be reestablished. And it didn't matter how many people would die. It doesn't matter how many people's lives would be destroyed, how many families' dads would be killed. This had to be restored. What did 9-11 gain for Rome, for the papacy? Well, number one, American freedom was destroyed through the New Patriot Act. Now folk will call me and order the, the book about the Jays on my phone. And I'll say, I didn't, I didn't write any books about birds. Can you be more specific? Why do people say that? It's because of the New Patriot Act. They're scared. They don't want to use the word Jesuit because they think that somebody is listening in and is going to take notes and will someday come at them for that. American freedom was destroyed at September 11th. We just have shreds of it today. The restoration of the poppy growing region in the Hellman Valley. Heroin began to be prolifically grown again to the tune of three to 4,000 tons a year in Afghanistan. Billions of dollars of drug money is being used by the Catholic Intelligence Agency today to create war and terror to bring about the restoration of Romanism one final time. You know, folk, in light of the great controversy, in light of the books Daniel and Revelation, what we have just seen here is the only thing that makes sense in the light of Bible prophecy in the last 75 years. This only makes sense. What we're hearing on the news is a bunch of foolishness. With Al-Qaeda operatives being trained by the Catholic Intelligence Agency right here on American soil, the Jesuits will use them to create distraction and terror right here in American cities. When God allows them to do something awful again in America, like 9-11, but next time it will be worse, maybe through a little suitcase bomb that will blow up a third of St. Louis or you know, that will blow up half of Chicago or half of Miami, Americans will look for a solution for this papal-induced problem. And the papacy and apostate Protestants will come forward with their solution to the problem. We've got to get back to God and go to church on Sunday. Now the Supreme Court is about to vote on same-sex marriages, and they're likely going to allow it, this could call down upon America heaven's partial judgments. Al-Qaeda will be blamed, and the papacy will shine bright while they are the ones responsible. Statement in Great Controversy, page 606 says, the inroads of spiritualism, the, the stealthy but rapid progress of the papal power, all will be unmasked. There will be voices, folk, as 
Prophets and Kings 187 and 188 says, there will be voices throughout the world that will tell the truth of the great controversy for this time. Praise God. Praise God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you today that John and Daniel and Ellen White, they knew what they were talking about. Thank you that the Holy Spirit that impressed these grand truths upon their minds are just that, they're the truth. Father in heaven, I pray that you would use our voices to expose the man of sin before all the world that every person can make a firm and solid decision. Please send the Holy Spirit to anoint people's eyes with eye salve that they can see. In Jesus' name, amen.